Hi, Dr. Mark Sell here from the YouTube channel Therapy for the Heart. It's nice to be here. I have a new series of videos that I'm doing. I apologize for not being around for a while and not making videos, but I am back. So um, thanks for being here. And uh, so this is Mark Sell from the YouTube channel Therapy for the Heart. And this is going to be the 31st talk on uh, not expressing feelings. The first uh, one was uh, I wish I had um, followed my dreams instead of living my life according to the expect expectations of others. And this was from an article by Bonnie Ware that, who interviewed um, people who were dying of cancer. And um, uh, she asked them, what were your regrets in life? So those are the two regrets. This is on, on, not, on not expressing feelings. Um, wish I had the courage to express my feelings. Uh, we're not born with timidity or fear, in my opinion. I mean, children, infants might be very different, and they are different in personalities. But generally, that's an inherited fear and timidity. Uh, it depends upon nurture and how we were brought up by our, our care, caregivers. And uh, Therapy for the Heart, this channel, is about the role of emotions in our life. That's what, how it, the title is on the, on the channel somewhere there. And um, it's how, how therapy can hold people in a safe place uh, where they'll be listened to and paid attention to uh, and discover uh, their feelings uh, that they never could, uh, ha could express and, and thoughts, thoughts that they could never could express to anybody because it wasn't safe. So we're not born with timidity or fear and what we learn about what's acceptable and what's dangerous is from those who raise us. I was thinking about uh, this man uh, wheeling a, a, a carriage down the street the other day and I was, was watching him and the, the kid was crying and temper tantrum and kind of inconsolable. That's hard to take for a parent, but he reached down in the crib and, crib and just grabbed her like that and yelled at her. If that's repeated over and over, that's emotional abuse. Even one time can have a tremendous, it's a, it's a little kid. Now parents have their struggles and frustrations, but you, you need to tuck it away, you know? Leave it, leave your, leave it at the gate and not, not act out. Terrible, um, if it's over and over again, that child's gonna be very damaged. And we, hear, we see that often in streets. Uh, 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 caregivers will be scold and reprimand. And they have no thought that they don't seem to be, that this is, this is not correct. Um, a father talks out loud in the uh, movies and uh, his son says, Dad, could you not do that? It's embarrassing. And the father shuts up for hours, just doesn't talk to the child. That's emotional desertion in my book. If it happens over and over again, it's the same thing. You know, so you're gonna, you're, the child's going to blame itself and feel, what's wrong with me? It's not going to be able to stand up to the father unless it's taught to be able to do that. Um, boys... Uh, uh, has this visit and when he's home he's, his mother has a visitor from a man that's not her, her husband so so he, he gets all worried because and this happens frequently this person comes up and he gets all worried because he thinks his whole white life is going to fall asunder and you know he has this fantasies of uh, parents and, uh, divorcing never being together and what's going to happen to him he says to his mother can you lock the door and at night Please. So he wanted to hear the bell, you know, when it would ring, and, and, and make sure he could hear the person coming up the stairs so he could be prepared to be killed. And uh, you know, child's, children's fantasies are very real, They're not having to do with actual reality. But if his mother said, "Oh, well, why do you want me to do that?" and then could tease out his fear, no, she didn't want to do that because she wanted to have her visitor. So he, that those fears uh, had quite an impact on this kid's life. Um, a child runs around excitedly, you know, and it's very happy and joyful about something, comes home, I want to tell you, mom or dad, listen, listen to what happened to me today. And, and he, son, the mother or father says, don't let it go to your head. Don't let it go to your head. Where is it supposed to go? What are you supposed to do? Suppress the feelings, yeah. Or else something could happen bad superstition has a lot to do with this don't let it go to your head don't get too happy oh my god my, that's one thing we want to encourage in life is happiness and joy and leave your own superstitions behind you tuck them away someplace child comes home and 
mother and father are busy and he has something very, very important to tell them also. His mother, and then he, the father might be turning to the TV and reading the paper. It's kind of a typical male thing, but maybe not so much with modern day fathers, but it could happen. And oh, the mother's too busy with the kids, the other kids. It's, yeah, we have a lot of frustrations in life, but you can't always, you can't, we're not, the object is not to be perfect, but at least know that your lack of attention with the, the child wants you to pay attention is going to have an impact and it shouldn't be repeated too often. I had a personal desertion of mine. I went, when I was a kid, I used to go uh, meet my mother. And uh, one time I, I was waiting for her at five o'clock. I would go down. She, would, and she didn't show. I kept looking at the faces as they came out. Her face didn't appear. She was gone for three days. And that happened a few times and with other kinds of desertions too. She was had drinking problems. So, so I, I, I felt terrible, but I didn't really blame myself at that moment. It was only until years later that I would have intellectual insights from others. You know, oh, Mark, you probably blamed yourself, but I didn't understand that. I, oh, that sounds good. But it was only years later that I had the emotional, uh, emotional understanding, emotional insight that I did blame myself. If I was better, if I was more lovable, she wouldn't have let, she wouldn't have done that. So that's how children end up blaming themselves. So. We don't want to have our children or ourselves have self-blame. That's not good. Um, or, or, or I'm bad for expressing feelings. Or, sh or shamed for expressing feelings. Shame is, a soul, shame is a soul killer. Modern psychoanalysis and the role of aggression has, has a lot to say about this, and Spotnitz had a lot to say about it. He, he gave up the role of interpretation in the 50s because he, he knew that that was hurting people. Uh, and uh, so he developed a different way of working with people and uh, he wrote a book on uh, the modern psychoanalysis. So I'm going to talk about um, uh, also the, 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 the mental illness, the illness, the, the how, it, what, how it's caused is by the uh, role of aggression, by aggression being internalized. So he talked about depression, that people will attack themselves rather than attack others. Uh, I'm a piece of shit, I'm worthless. Um, no good. Um, psychosomatic uh, illness uh, is attacked. Uh, attack the bodily organs are attacked, and ulcers and ac acne and uh, and uh, thought processes. Uh, I'm stupid. I'm no good. I'm not smart. You know the executive function of the ego is attacked. So he he was brilliant. In, uh, that helped me understand the people that I work with. And I'll give you an example. I was working with somebody who was addicted to crack, and. Um, he, I treated him for three years, and he didn't have an angry bone in his body, he thought. So I knew what I needed to do in treatment, so I gradually helped him criticize me. So what that means is you're taking the uh, aggression out of the ego and putting it into the object world, on the object world, then. So that's what the wonderful job that I have to help him express his anger towards me, and it is a wonderful job. If somebody hasn't been able to say the truth and be authentic for all their life, well, it's a great job I have. It's a tough one, but uh, so I helped him begin criticizing my work, you know, and oh, you're fine. I said, well, uh, many of my patients find something about me that they don't do right, do right. I don't talk right, I, I talk too fast, I talk too slow, my office is, I like the paintings, but he did gradually begin to criticize me, and uh, and uh, in the end, he had some. He said something that was very. He gave up crack, and he said something very uh, profound to me. He said, "When I feel angry, I don't have the impulse to use crack." So he used crack a lot of times to control his his feelings of anger from coming to surface. Or when they came to surface, he would subdue them. And that's what he said. So I thought that was very profound. He, he let me, he said, you can tell people that, so I'm telling you that. And also he gave up medication, other medications that he was using. Um, here's some cancer stats. Talk about not talking about your feelings. Extreme suppression of anger was the most commonly identified characteristic of 160 breast cancer patients. That was a world study. Uh, Another one, found men with prostate cancer who had greater suppression of anger had fewer numbers of natural killer cells, natural killer cells, which are the key immune system cells for fighting cancer. It's, it's called NKCC, natural killer cell. It's natural, natural killer cell 
cytotoxicity, cytotoxicity, NKCC. I wrote an article on LinkedIn talking about a, a Rachel Pattons, who's a, Patton, who's a singer. She wrote a song, fight song, and uh, she visited a seven-year-old Jeremiah Sukar, and he was a seven-year-old kid with um, four-stage brain cancer, and she went to visit him. I, I feel so much, so much sometimes about this story and different things, you know. But she went to visit him, and um, he. He was prepared, and he sang the song with her. He memorized it, and uh, and 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 it's a wonderful duet that they had. And she's she she's just wonderful. It was a wonderful song. He might have remembered it, you know. And uh, so he says something about the uh, the uh, these f these like balls banging in his brain, you know. And that, that's what I called interjects, you know, these bad things. And he, and he wanted to scream. He wanted to scream out. You know, there you go. He wanted to scream. So if you want that, uh, I, I wrote an article about that at LinkedIn. It was a pretty good article. If you want that and you can prepare uh, for uh, next talk, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you if you send me an email. So I'm gonna, we're going to have part two of, of not expressing feelings more on uh, the relationship of psychosomatic illness, particularly cancer. And, um, and I hope you can like the channel and subscribe to it if you have a Gmail account. And I'd like to see your comments, and, and, and then I will uh, 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 respond. So that's just get a Gmail account, and you can have, and all in, in the videos will be automatically sent to you. Um, and uh, so I can be reached at 212-228-3467. Uh, Marksell.com, that's my website. You can email me at marksell at gmail.com. That's M-A-R-K-S-E-H-L at gmail.com. And, uh, and also, I, you can text me if you're so inclined, 917-991-9113. So thanks for listening, and I hope to be back next week with uh, part two of uh, I Wish I Had Expressed My Feelings. So thanks for listening, and bye-bye.